Hello everyone. My name is Sneha Vishwas and I'm working with Western Geco Technical Sales. Today I'm presenting this work on behalf of my colleagues Pete Watterson, Shipra Mahat, Chris Kanal and Rishi Ram Sumer. My talk today is about combining a multi-measurement streamer system with existing efficiency techniques, specifically acquisition of data during turns. This is the outline of my study broken down into different sections explaining the experiment we did to show the ability of the multi-measurement streamers in conjunction with acquisition of data during turns for an efficient marine acquisition. In 2010, Ozbek et al. showed that we can use multi-measurement streamers, which provides pressure as well as both vertical and cross-line pressure gradients with the generalized matching pursuit or GMP technique to resolve the compromise with respect to cross-line spacing and streamer separation by reconstruction of the wave field. Following on from this, Mahat et al. in 2014 showed that we can increase the streamer separation in conjunction with this GMP technique to further increase efficiency. In both of the above papers, the reconstruction of the data between the streamers and the quality of that reconstructed data was of prime consideration. However, for the purpose of this talk, we will focus on the reconstructed data at the cable where we have used multi-measurement data to produce 3D degaussed data at the original cable location. So a conventional seismic, if we look at the cartoon on the screen, is comprised of a series of straight lines where after completion of a straight line, the vessel takes a turn outside the survey full fold area and comes back to the next straight line. In continuous acquisition, these turns are incorporated within the survey full fold area, as you can see in the cartoon here. Continuous acquisition is a technique that has been used for several years with hydrophone only streamers. More recently, we have shown that we can combine this with other acquisition techniques. For example, in 2014, Patanel and Bryce showed that on a hydrophone only system, we could improve efficiency and vessel optimization by continuously acquiring data during the line turns. This was combined with our slant streamer acquisition. Acquiring data in turns is beneficial in that the line change time is potentially reduced to zero, the vessel is continuously in production mode, and this method has a potential for 100% vessel utilization. Also, this enables us to acquire data in areas where previously we could not have reached because of the turns, such as close to restricted zones, shallow waters, underwater obstructions, close to block or national boundaries, etc. The aim of the study and subsequent talk is therefore to show how we can combine our multi-measurement streamer system with acquiring data during the turns to further increase our efficiency. In 2014, we acquired a test line in the Barents Sea. 12 streamers, each of 7 kilometers long, were towed at a separation of 75 meters, and the streamers were towed flat at a depth of 25 meters. The turn radius was 6.5 kilometers. The plot on the right hand side of the screen shows the geometry for the line for three representative cables only. Throughout the presentation, I'll refer to the segments as straight, initial turn, and full turn. These represent the streamer shape from the straight and parallel through to the full turn. One thing to be remembered here is that the main limitation of the study is that we are comparing straight with curved lines and they do not necessarily cover the same geology. However, in terms of comparing the overall data quality and signal to noise ratio, we are considering data acquired at the same time with the same acquisition equipment in the same area. The starting point for the processing flow was after acquisition data conditioning. Following this, we performed the GMP preconditioning and subsequent GMP wave field reconstruction and separation. The majority of the analysis were performed at this stage and were in the form of both quantitative and qualitative analysis performed at short and stack levels. The GMP data was then taken through further processing sequence, which included designature and zero phasing, demultiple using SRME, and then a 2D Kirchhoff pre-stack time migration. This was done to assess the consequences of having acquired the data during turns, which could possibly be identified in some downstream processing. Additional QC was done at stack level on this data set. So we applied the standard GMP preconditioning workflow. This is a flow which we have developed based on our experience of acquiring and processing multi-measurement streamer data. This workflow consisted of the data post acquisition conditioning at 3.125 meters spacing for all the three measurements, P, Y, and Z. Residual noise attenuation, which targeted anomalously low and high frequency noise was then applied. Unit conversion was then performed along with receiver motion correction and the data was spatially resampled to 6.25 meters. 
Signal protected noise attenuation was applied and this was aimed at attenuation of residual low frequency noise, specifically tug noise from the cables. Details of this flow and the signal protected noise attenuation are available in a separate publication. Due to the very severe levels of cross-flow noise remnant after the acquisition data conditioning, we had to apply additional noise attenuation in the form of singular value decomposition or SVD noise attenuation. This method was presented by Moldovano in 2011 and proved to be very successful in the attenuation of this cross-flow noise experienced during the turns on hydrophone-only data and has become a standard processing step for all the acquisition in turns. Hence, it was relatively straightforward for us to take the flow and adapt it to the multi-measurement data. Before we go into the details of analysis and processing, allow me to now jump forward to the 2D stack post-migration. This is effectively the final result of the experiment. From this section, it was not obvious that the data was affected during turns in terms of noise increase or signal degradation. The first section on the display repre represents the data when the cables were straight, then in the initial turn, and then in the full turn where the cables were fully curved. Let us now go back to, and look at the early processing sequence and the data. Now looking back to the details of analysis and processing, these plots represent the data after acquisition data conditioning. The left plot is the hydrophone data, the middle represents the vertical accelerometer data, and this represents any energy that is going down and reflected back. The right plot is the cross-line accelerometer data and this represents any energy which is moving across the spread. The hydrophone data is very clean and the accelerometers exhibit the typical noise levels that we expect from this early stage of processing. These plots represent the data after SVD and residual attenuation. The low frequency noise is cleaned up and there is clear evidence of good signal content on both the Y and the Z measurement which will be used in GMP wave field reconstruction and separation. We can see that we have some interesting cross-line energy on the Y measurement that complements the more prominent events that we see on the Z measurement. And here we look at another shot, also after acquisition data conditioning, but during the full turn. And it is immediately obvious that there is a significant level of noise, particularly on the accelerometer data. Elevated levels of noise are to be expected on the accelerometers due to increased cross-flow and greater forces on the streamers. Although mostly low frequency noise, it is within the signal bandwidth. Applying the extra noise attenuation does a good job on the hydrophone data and removes significant noise on the accelerometers. There is some residual noise evident and this can affect the quality of reconstruction, especially at positions away from the constraining cables. Once the majority of the noise is removed, we can see that there is good recoverable signal on the accelerometer data. The yellow arrow highlights here just one of the many instances where we see good signal. In this case, we see the event which can be correlated across Y and P, but not represented on Z. This shows the complementary nature of the Y and Z measurements. As mentioned earlier, we use the three measurements and the GMP algorithm to reconstruct and separate the wave field into its up and down going constituents. Now, if the wave field separation is done correctly, the separated up and down going wave fields can then be recombined to generate the total pressure wave field. If the process has worked as expected and we successfully have separated out the energy into its two components, that is the up and down going components, this total pressure wave field should be almost identical to the total pressure wave field as originally measured by the hydrophone alone. Hence, if we take the difference of the two, the difference should be close to zero with the exception of some noise and any elements of the wave field that we have chosen not to reconstruct. The left-hand plot represents the hydrophone, the middle the GMP and right the difference. The difference shows the linear residual tug noise which was not reconstructed as a part of the wave field as well as the early arrivals which were initially intentionally filtered out by the GMP through user parameter selection. This attenuation of the tug noise is a benefit of the wave field reconstruction technique as the noise being individual to each cable is not reconstructed, leading to the de-ghosted output data being much cleaner than the measurements as input to the process. Scaling the energy by 10 illustrates the noise but very little evidence of any signal loss. For the turn data, we see similar results in terms of very little signal loss and more noise on the difference plots. Again, we see that the GMP does not reconstruct this noise that is individual to each cable. And in this case, we see that the level of noise we are attenuating in this way has increased. 
Scaling by 10 shows the same and once again there is very little evidence of signal loss. We can now extend the same analysis to the stack level. Hence, here we compare again the measured pressure from the hydrophone data with the summed output of the upgoing and downgoing data output by the reconstruction process and look at the difference. Note that when we do this analysis for the straight section, we see that the difference mainly contains the linear dipping noise. There is some low level of signal leakage observed in the shallow, even scaling it at 10 times. When we do the same analysis for the stack section, for the turn data, we see that the results exhibit similar characteristics as the straight section, where we observe some low level of signal leakage, but mainly noise on the difference plots. And here I have scaled it by 10. We will now focus on some quantitative analysis. Three windows were selected in the shallow. One represents the straight, the second the initial turn and one in the area of full turn. We then make our best estimate of the signal and noise separately and perform spectral analysis on this. The solid line represents the signal and the dash the noise floor. Obviously there are limitations to how successfully we can separate the signal from the noise in any seismic processing exercise. However, for the purpose of these type of comparisons, we find that the spectral analysis done in this form is more informative. In this example, blue represents the hydrophone total wave field for cable 1 and green the GMP total. As mentioned previously, if we have a good wave field separation, we would expect a good match between the two and the curves should not deviate significantly from each other. At this scale, this appears to be the case. However, we need to examine the data more carefully to see if there is any deviation at all. For this acquisition, we towed the cable deep at 25 meters and hence we expect to see the first pressure notch at 30 Hz. If we zoom into the plot and focus on the 30 Hz area where we expect the pressure notch, we do not see a deviation from the two curves by more than 0.5 decibels or even less over a limited frequency range. This can be observed to be the case for all the three plots and therefore gives us the confidence in the wave field reconstruction and separation for both the straight line and the curved line section of the acquisition. Moving on to an additional metric that we can use to assess the quality of the reconstruction, we can generate some repeatability analysis. Because the locations of the GMP total wave field and the hydrophone total wave field are identical, and the signal content should be very similar, we can use the metrics that we employ in 4D analysis. We take a window in the shallow where we have good signal to noise ratio and compute the following. Phase rotation, time shift, cross correlation coefficient and amplitude scalar. For all the plots, we want to be as close as possible to the red line. In this case, the first, second and fourth plots should be zero crossing and the third one, the red line is closer to one. As we move from straight to turn data, it is not evident that there is a large deterioration in the 4D matching. Although we do see that as we move to the right, there is a slight increase in deviation from where we want the plots to be. This additional analysis gives us further confidence in the quality of wave field reconstruction and separation. Having analyzed extensively the data at short and stack level early in the processing, we would now like to take the data through additional processing sequence to confirm that the quality of turned data does not deteriorate with further processing. Let us zoom in on a shallow window where we can see the signal to noise better. As we move from the total hydrophone stack to upgoing wave field after demultiple through to 2D migration, there is no evidence to suggest a deterioration in the signal quality or increase in the noise across the section from left to right, that is with increasing turn. To simplify the picture that we are looking at, we applied a quick 2D demultiple. We do not expect that these demultiple will be optimum. However, in terms of removing the majority of the clutter created by the imposing water bottom multiple on the top of the data, this is adequate for the purpose of the current analysis. We now look at an initial 2D migration of the data. This is definitely not the most elegant and cleanest migrated section of the seismic data that you have come across. However, this is deliberate. For the post-migration data, we have not applied any additional noise filtering before or after migration as we wanted to assess the data in its rawest form after migration to ensure that we were not hiding any potential ill effects of the turn data. What we see is that we do have a large number of migration swings, however these extend from left to right across the section whether the data is from straight or turn part of the acquisition. And this is the slide that I showed earlier in the presentation as the final result of the analysis that we have done up to this point. 
To conclude, in this paper, we have evaluated the use of multi-measurement streamer technology during turns, an approach that can improve productivity of marine seismic acquisition programs. A field test conducted in the Barents Sea comprised a continuous line covering both straight, partial and full turn segments. As expected, the accelerometer measurements exhibited significantly elevated noise levels due to cross-flow energy during the turns. The application of a standard post-acquisition data conditioning workflow plus an additional step of noise attenuation based on singular value decomposition method provided effective noise mitigation ahead of the wave field separation using the GMP technique at the real streamer locations. Analysis were based both on qualitative and quantitative at short and stack levels. With this, on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to thank Shlambaje for the permission to publish this work. Thank you for watching. For more e-lectures, take a look at the e-lecture playlist. Thank you very much.